We've got a great show for you today. We're going to start things off with our tech law expert, Enrico Schaefer, or as we sometimes call him here, Enrico Suave. So. <laughs> Good to see you guys so, again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. Where are you today, by the way? So I'm in the Detroit office today. Okay, where with, is uh, yeah. I guess for everyone is like home, right? And so, yeah, in Detroit these days. All cool. Right. All right. Because I know you're you're frequently all over the place with the uh, with your clients. So, yeah. Let me let me ask you. I, I imagine your travel schedule has been whacked way back too, right? Go, almost completely, Mike. I mean, I haven't been anywhere since uh, since <laughs> late February. Uh, so oh, it's geez. been a, it's been a lockdown situation for me. Courts are doing everything remotely for the most part. So uh, no one's traveling for depositions. Those are all remote. It's uh, the legal system has adjusted fairly well to the remote uh, situation. If you think about it, how much money is spent every year for clients paying for their lawyers to fly all over the place, right? So one of the good things from COVID, that's kind of come to an end. Before we start on what we're going to talk about, so let me just follow up on that. Do you think that this is going to be the new norm for the legal or is there going to be some sort of hybrid in between? It'll be hybrid, but there will the fact that we've been here, right, means that we're going to end up back here a lot more. And this was the rare exception where you would have a court hearing by, you know, by phone or or by Zoom. Now it will become the rule. And judges love it, too, by the way. Sure. Yeah. They've got a mute they, button. They, you know, they can have their jammies on under their robes, too, if they want. So, you know, exactly. Of course, I, I think some of them do anyway. But anyway, um, you wanted to talk uh, um, today about your uh, action against Airbnb on behalf of Airbnb hosts. Sorry, so man. let's let's get an update on that. Where is where is that uh, lawsuit now? Yeah, so really exciting things going on, as you know, because uh, I think the last interview I did, we were talking about these arbitrations we were filing against Airbnb under the terms of service by hosts who had their payouts diverted, and in some cases, simply just taken by Airbnb, which uh, simply just acted in its own self-interest once COVID hit, it wasn't going to survive. So it basically took all the money that was going between hosts and guests and commandeered a bunch of that for, for itself. In Virtually every platform, as you guys know, there's always a arbitration clause, a class action waiver clause. So we've spent a lot of time trying to understand how we can get around that. And the good news is, based on a lot of the responses we got from Airbnb in these arbitrations, these you know scores of arbitrations that have been filed, we were able to find a legal, viable legal theory to file the class action, which went in last week. Um, and so it's a it's a massive multi billion dollar class action uh, that is now pending in the Northern District of California federal court, mm. and uh, is yeah, uh, that's the tech by, district, am I right? Yeah. yeah, it's been filed by us, and then we ch we basically interviewed a bunch of class action law firms to partner up with, and we found this great firm, the Gibbs Law Group, uh, who has got all the expertise, resources in the world to go toe to toe with Airbnb. Um, bring my pretty face with their resources, and we think we might have a shot. All right. All right so, right, like, so oh, go ahead, Matt. No, 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 you go ahead, Mike. Uh, so, how many uh, clients do you have in your class action suit? Are we talking dozens, hundreds, thousands? Well, hundreds of thousands, uh, and perhaps you know more. It's hard to tell exactly how many U.S. hosts there are. Uh, but it's right now the class definition is all U.S. based hosts. We're looking to expand that to be wow. all hosts globally. But right now in this initial filing, it's all U.S. hosts. Now, keep in mind, in a class action, everyone who meets the class definition is <laughs> automatically included. That's where the hundreds of thousands come from. We've been contacted by hundreds, maybe even you know, over a thousand hosts about filing a class action who are now excited about the fact that we've got a court case in play seeking not only to get the money that Airbnb diverted from the payouts, but also to change the terms of service to something that is much more fair and far less unconscionable. And that's a big thing because these platforms, since they draft the terms, they, they think they could like take everything, you know, take everything and your firstborn child what choice do you have? It's take it or leave it, right? right. Um, and then when you get into a dispute, which they say they're you know, committed to resolving these you know, efficiently and cheaply in, in AAA arbitration, 
you find out that's not true either. And they're going to fight on every single little thing to the death. Uh, mm. And so, uh, you know, it's, it needs to change. And a lot of platforms did get the memo years ago, Google, Facebook, all of a sudden they shifted. You might recall like the terms used to be, they could do whatever they want with your data and they don't have to tell you right now. None of that exists. It's all, you have privacy controls. You get to control reminders of control, you know, very detailed terms of service, which say exactly what's going on. You got GDPR in the EU, right? So all of this has flipped on its head to be a user centric terms of service approach in a lot of these platforms, <clears throat> Airbnb never got the memo, right? There's still say, we'll take your first child if we want to, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. So we're trying to change that for the sharing economy moving forward, just much more fair, reasonable terms of service. Now, so, uh, tell, tell me a little bit about how this has worked for the average Airbnb guest. I'm, I'm going to tell you a little personal story here and then try to figure out where that money came from that I later used as Airbnb credits. Right. My wife and I had planned a, a, like this epic two week driving vacation mm -hmm. where we were going to go from Detroit to Toronto to Montreal to the coast of Maine and then come back through Boston and Niagara mm -hmm. Falls. Now, the only place we had a regular hotel room anywhere in that trip was Boston. Um, obviously, we had to cancel it. For one thing, they weren't letting us into Canada. Yeah. Um, and Airbnb said, well, we'll either give you half your money back in cash or you can have all of it back in Airbnb credit. And we chose the Airbnb credit because we figured we'd use it all eventually. And indeed, we have used most of it by now. So where where did that money come from? It wasn't conjured up out of thin air. So. I'm a host. It came from me. I paid for your Airbnb. <laughs> and that's the problem. So the, yeah. the travel credits, we call it the travel credit scam. Because what it was is... Airbnb didn't have enough money to meet its expenses. It got $2 billion from its, its then investors to, to shore up the ship, but it also needed more money and it had all these upcoming payouts to host. So they, they couldn't make those payouts. And so they said, hey, uh, you know, guess we're gonna give you a full refund. But when you got there, what did you find? You found two choices, accept the cancellation policy that you'd agree to with the host, which said you don't get a refund, right? right or take this travel credit, no questions asked from Airbnb. And of course, most guests did that because those, you know, between the two options, that's the better one. Yeah. The problem with that is Airbnb by offering that travel credit simply took the host money and took it for itself. And then it got to hold that money while you waited to use your travel credit, right? So it kept its cash and it was able to move that money from its payment processing arm into its own account. So it used that money to fund itself out. Now you used your credits fairly quickly. A lot of guests have until next year, to December, 2021. So Airbnb gets use of all of my money in the meantime, which it diverted, which it had no interest in, right? You may or may not use your travel credit down the line. And if you don't, I get Airbnb keeps that money in which it held as a fiduciary, as an escrow to that transaction. It's just a bridge too far. Yeah. So if there's people watching or either now or on demand and, and want to join into your class action lawsuit, what would they do? So go to TraverseLegal.com. Traverse is in Traverse City, right? TraverseLegal.com. You'll see a link on the homepage for these Airbnb cases. Just get into the system because then we'll keep you up to date about what's happening. And here's the other big news is under the new terms of service that Airbnb came out with last week after we fought them for six months on how terrible their terms were, they came out with new terms. We won. Oh no, the new terms say we get two of your children and no <laughs> question asked, right? So those new terms come into effect January 20th of 2021. And what we're telling hosts, if you don't file your arbitration claims on these refunds, on these diverted host payouts by then, Airbnb is going to say you're under the new terms, which are even worse than the old terms. So get your arbitration claims filed. You can contact us. We can help you with that as well. Um, the other the other service that I've used to rent um, vacation homes, I've been using them for 20 years or more, is something called VRBO, which stands for Vacation Rental by Owner. Yes. It, are, are those terms any better if you're a host for VRBO yeah. or, or are they just as bad? No, no. Uh, VRBO, Booking.com, these platforms, for the most part, did not interfere with the rental contract between the host and the guest, to which none of them are a party, right? So you should right. have worked that out with your host. They probably would have given you a travel credit, right? But 
Um, all the other platforms played by the rules. Airbnb, who was supposed to be going IPO in May, decided they were going to take advantage of this uh, to, to, to really level up on their competitors. Because when travel started again, oh, the guests who got that full refund travel credit from Airbnb, well, if it's travel credit, you're going back to Airbnb, right? So they were able to engage in all sorts and all levels of self-dealing by interfering with those rental contracts between hosts and guests. Hmm. Okay, we got about three minutes left. Is there any other hot legal news besides your dog there is getting ready to jump on your couch? But, yeah, that's that's Cooper, and uh, you know it's a dog dog eat dog world. I think that the the really the other big news out there is that you've got all these um, amazing tech companies that seem to be thriving in the midst of COVID, right? And we've seen you know, certainly a lot of the online uh, retailers, we were really worried as everyone else was when COVID hit, what was going to happen to our clients? And yes, we have clients that are suffering, but the shocking thing is how many clients we have who are just crushing it. And so that I think should be hopeful for all of us, especially with this vaccine news today, right? That the ones that are suffering will be able to come back and the ones who actually are doing better they'll they'll be able to build upon that into the future okay all right so you came to us originally as a drone law expert way back in the day mm -hmm. is there anything new and interesting uh, regarding drone law these days or has that all been pretty much uh, settled out by the federal regulations that have been in effect so federal regulations are definitely um, uh, fairly predictable at this point. And so now, it, now it's drone service providers who are looking to do more than real estate photography, right? They're looking to deliver things from point A to point B within a hospital system. They're looking to do agricultural spraying. They're like in, looking mm. to do multiple drones from a single controller. And so there's now a path <laughs> for all of those different types of operations through the FAA regulations. But look at drones did get a bump in COVID just from the idea that we may need things coming and going by drone, which is a much safer alternative. So we did see a bump in that market because the, the, even after COVID, I think people understand we need th things like drones to help us when situations like this arise. And we weren't quite there yet on the drone side to be able to go ahead and go to market with a lot of this stuff. Hopefully next time, if there is a next time, uh, drones will be a big part of the story. Okay, cool. this is the we got to cut you off here. Uh, why don't you one more time give us uh, the address if folks want to reach out to you for drones or Airbnb or any other tech legal issues they go to where? TraverseLegal.com, Enrico Schaefer. You can find me online with a search of Enrico Schaefer uh, or Traverse Legal. Traditional four year students love Lawrence Technological University's thriving campus life. But LTU has always met non-traditional students' needs, too. Lawrence Tech offers over 100 degree and certificate programs that can get adult students started or back on track. And most of our classes are conveniently offered evenings at our beautiful Southfield campus or online so you can balance your social, family, and work life even while you power up your career. Lawrence Tech, where blue devils dare.